It's time for the ultimate open world experience. That becomes quite planned out and not so open world once you see the routes that speedrunners take. Limitless options and they still all do the same. This week we'll have a look at the endless ways of Carpal Tunnel the game. On a more serious note, runners of this game should actually be careful. It is really straining on the wrists. We start off with a mysterious voice waking us up from a little slumber in the Chamber of Resurrection. As we get on our feet, we grab the Shiga Slate, a high-tech piece that somehow got abandoned and is not used anymore despite being more high-tech than pretty much all the technology in the entire game combined. After a little introduction, we get to the next room with some clothing in it before we proceed to the final door of the chamber. We move into the corridor and get introduced to the climbing mechanic before introducing us to the breathtaking view of this immensely huge world. Little do we know that this is just a small chunk of a really, really large world. We move to our right as the game slightly hints us to give the old man a visit. As we do so, we get to walk our way to the first tower and encounter our first Bokoblins. In almost a Super Mario Bros. like manner, the game introduces us to the mechanics of the game without giving us much of a tutorial. After activating the first tower, we get introduced to the main objective of the game, defeating Calamity Ganon. And this is probably where most journeys ended as well. Obviously, as this is a Zelda game, Link will grab the ledge if we walk off the platform. Yeah, or maybe not. The game introduces us to another big part of the game here, death. Because everyone dies. A lot. Oh boy, it's Japa German. Japanese is actually the second slowest language in the game after English, with German being the fastest one. So Nintendo basically turned the N64 Zelda era upside down regarding speedruns. Oh, and Japanese text also isn't faster, as that one is adjusted to Japanese voice acting, which is the reason why languages end up having different speeds after all. So Germans just speak faster. But first things first. We will explain the beginning of the old dungeons run and possible alternatives that other runs tend to do, as they are endless ways of approaching things. Some are faster, some are slower, and some are unnecessary for certain goals. We start off by skipping the first cutscene, grabbing the Sheikah Slate and continuing our path in her hundred year old underwear. A glitch that is used a lot in all runs is the Whistle Sprint. You hold the left control stick forward, hold down the bottom D-pad button in order to continuously whistle, and mash B at the same time to get into a sprint and cancel whistling, which then cancels your sprint, ultimately giving you a close to sprinting speed without draining any stamina. The downside to this is, you need to control both control sticks with your index fingers, as your thumbs are occupied already. We sprint towards the introduction cutscene, head to the right to the old man and ignore him. On our way there we have the option to grab two bladed rhino beetles to get ourselves an attack potion and we can also collect a couple of mushrooms without losing a lot of time. Next we grab the axe behind him and head towards the bokoblin. Instead of killing him, we run at him at full speed and strike his shield, which makes him lose it and we can grab it. Be aware, this does not work on master mode. Here we activate the tower and skip the cutscenes. We're free to do whatever we like! Well, except leaving the plateau, as that is impossible. Even if we were to land outside of the plateau and survive it, we would just get teleported back onto it because we don't have the paraglider. We will follow the same shrines as the speedrunner to compare them, but obviously everyone had different approaches from here on. We climb down the tower and head for the first shrine, the Omen Ao Shrine, which by the way is an anagram for Ayanuma. The shrine was made to introduce the player to the runes and is the first little puzzle section in the game. We grab lift the platform, break the cube wall and build a bridge with magnesis before opening the last door and completing the shrine. Here we get introduced to spirit orbs, which will be explained later. We exit the shrine and get told to teleport on top of the tower again in order to look for other shrines and pin them. After doing so we climb down again and head for the Yabai Shrine, which gives us the remote bomb rune. We blast away two walls, then get introduced to the physics of the game, as we're meant to place a bomb on one of the catapults and let it explode at the right time in order to get rid of the last block wall. Now we exit, go into the snow area after cooking some food so we don't freeze to death, and solve a little puzzle by building a bridge with a metal platform. On the other side we head up the mountain and go into the third shrine, Ke Numut. 
we're free. Let's celebrate our freedom by running off the tower and throwing our weapon away. We throw it a little before hitting the floor and cancel the throw about two frames after by putting the weapon away. This will cancel the fall damage and we skipped having to slowly climb the tower down. After listening to the old man, we have two options. Get bombs first, so we get a little speed boost by blasting ourselves to the Magnesis Shrine, or getting the Magnesis Rune first and bombs second. The first option is fancy, but riskier and slower. The second option is boring, but at least it's safe and a little faster, so we'll go with that one. Once we're in the shrine, we start as usual. Get rid of the platform and break the wall. Here we won't have to use the platform though, as we can start shield surfing out of a full speed jump, which will give us enough height to make it over the gap. As we head out, we whistle sprint towards the Ja Baij shrine. Here we start by blowing up the first three walls, but then we throw the fourth bomb up the platform and let it explode at the right time. This will hit the wall at the bottom and open up the way to the orb. Now we hit plus and minus right after to get to the map screen without Link's animation of pulling out the Sheikah Slate, which only occurs for as long as the player does not have the glider. From here, we teleport to the Shrine of Resurrection and use another advantage of the Whistle Sprint. We can run up slopes that aren't too steep. This is faster than climbing itself and we get to keep our stamina. We grab three mushrooms on our way, walk a little and then can use the height advantage to shield serve down again, which is faster than walking and the shield doesn't get damaged for as long as we're surfing on snow. Once we reach the platform puzzle, we perform another sprint into shield surf to skip this puzzle as well. As we are approaching the hill, we whistle sprint up the first few meters, then perform two climb jumps, whistle sprint again and then climb jump for the rest. This is done while keeping our hearts filled with mushrooms and Hyrule Herb we collected on the way. After this is done, we enter the shrine. The only difference in the shrine is a neat little trick in which we can summon an ice block, start shield surf on it and jump before the block finished forming itself. This gives us enough height to unequip the shield and climb up the wall so we don't have to use the seesaw. Using the seesaw doesn't lose a whole lot of time however. There are several ways to get to the last shrine. One is to chop down a tree, go to the other side and climb up the wall until we reach the shrine. Another is to approach it from the shrine we just came from. We enter it and get the stasis rune, the last rune we need to finish the game. Here we freeze the rotation platform, which is an awesome introduction to that mechanic as well. We prevent the rolling boulder from crushing us by freezing it and then find the sledgehammer, which is conveniently placed right in front of the last boulder, which is blocking our way. We pick it up, freeze the boulder with stasis and then use the sledgehammer to charge up a large amount of momentum, which unleashes as the stasis timer runs out, ultimately getting rid of the boulder for us. As we grab the last spirit orb and exit the shrine, the old man approaches us one last time telling us to go to the center of the four shrines, the old temple of time. As we enter, we see an old goddess statue waiting for us. We pick our reward and get told to get onto the roof by the old man. After we climb the ladder, we see him inside the tower waiting for us. He reveals his identity, tells us the story of the last hundred years, gives us the paraglider, and by doing that, we can finally leave the plateau along with it. Here we have two choices. Depending on our route, we can now grab the warm doublet or we can skip it. After passing the top of Mount Talia, we shield surf a little more until we reach the stasis shrine. We are a little too high up to just jump down though, so we'll perform another fall damage cancel by throwing the weapon and putting it away a couple of frames later. We enter the shrine, get the rune and freeze the platform as soon as we can move again. If we're fast enough, we don't have to wait at all. The rolling boulder can be ignored with enough stamina as well. It's a tight window, but nothing to be afraid of. The last part is a little more precise. We skip the sledgehammer and jump past the boulder. With the right timing and angle, we can just make it past the boulder by performing another shield serve to gain some more distance and unequip the shield once more to get out of the serve and regain the ability to climb up the last bit of the platform. After leaving the shrine, we patiently wait for the old man to disappear, then walk to the boulder on the left side of the shrine. We drop down a bomb into the hole below the boulder, freeze the boulder with stasis, turn our back towards it and start a charge attack. If we face an item with our back before charging an attack, we will hit it way more often than we would if we were to face the object. Once the boulder is fully charged, we move away slightly, detonate the bomb to set its flight direction towards the temple and start climbing it. We have to make sure that Link's climb animation is fully stopped as it starts flying, otherwise Link will drop off the boulder and will get a good amount of damage. 
We almost made it to the Temple of Time with the boulder alone. We only have to make sure to let go late enough to not get any fall damage. The only thing left is to climb the Temple of Time, listen to the story and we're set to save Hyrule. Also, could someone save me from that cold? I sound like I stuck socks up my nose, so apologies for that. Make sure to subscribe to hear beautiful, non-socky voices in future videos. Or maybe just subscribe for the content, I don't know.